So I had to troubleshoot the trim tabs and that required removing the refrigerator. So this video is a little long, but it's about removing the refrigerator and checking the power to the trim tab controller. And I thought you guys might enjoy it, find it useful. So if you're looking to remove the refrigerator or if you're having an issue with your trim tabs, this video may help. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome aboard Elvin Ray this morning. We're in the driveway of my house, but there's some work to be done. So we're gonna get some projects knocked out on this beautiful Sunday uh, afternoon. One of the issues that we have is that the uh, trim tabs stopped working for some reason. We're not sure why. We're gonna check the trim tab fuse in just a second. Uh, but to describe for you where the trim tab components and connections are located, what I've learned so far is there are uh, obviously a fuse at the fuse panel behind the console. There are two connections back at the actuators. Each actuator has a connection that you can check to see and make sure they're tightened. Both of our trim tabs are not working, so I was pretty sure it wasn't those connections, but I did get my hand under there and just feel to make sure those connections were solid. And then there is a black box and the trim tab switch located close to each other on the helm, uh, right beneath the throttle control. So unfortunately, to get to those connections, you actually have to take out the refrigerator. And I've not seen any videos online about how to remove the refrigerator, so we're gonna learn about this together. First thing I'm gonna do is check the fuse again, just to make sure. And if that fuse is good, then we're gonna pull the refrigerator. So the trim tab switches that we're talking about are right here. And when we're underway, up until the last time we used the boat, I could actuate those trim tabs, level the boat out really nice, get the boat right nice on plane and have a great uh, fuel economy nice nice ride nice level ride and uh it was very easy but that that trim tab switch isn't doing anything right now so i've got to figure out why there is no um switch on the panel there's no uh switch at the back so it's uh, either got to be the fuse that has blown for some reason or potentially uh, problem with the box that controls the whole system. So we're going to go into the head compartment and we're going to look at this panel right here. This is where the fuse, most of the fuses are located on the boat. And you just rotate that panel downward and you've got two fuse blocks here. Now those fuse blocks you can access just by pushing the button. The cover comes off and you can look and see a uh, nicely labeled fuse panel. And it's great to have those labels because it makes it much easier to identify. And you can see right here that our trim tabs should be operating with this fuse. So let's pull this fuse and see what we find. Now, if this fuse had failed, you'd be able to see a broken section in that little hoop inside the yellow cover there. Uh, it looks pretty solid to me. I'm going to go ahead and put a continuity test on it just to make sure. And then we will continue our troubleshooting further down the line. But it looks to me like we have a good 20 amp fuse. And uh, we have uh, pulled that as the one that's labeled trim tab. Okay, we're set up here on the, uh, in the galley, and I've got my multimeter here. I've got it set up for a continuity test. So this is a real simple test, just to make sure that the fuse itself is working properly. It's got the fuse down on a non-conductive surface. This glass top makes a good surface. And you can see we have continuity. 
uh, noted by the beep. You do a test like this to make sure your multimeter is measuring properly. Then you can put your blades down on there. So we know the fuse is passing current and now we've got to move on to the next step. So we've determined that the fuse is not the problem and now we've got to figure out what the next step is. I'm going to leave the fuse out for now to make sure the system is not powered up. Uh, if I need to check for power once I get the refrigerator out, I'll uh, turn the power back on, put the fuse back in, and then see if we've got power at the trim tabs uh, or at the trim tab control box. But for now, I'm going to leave the fuse out just to make sure uh, we're not powered up with the actual few uh, devices I'm going to be playing with. I'm also going to turn off the house power uh, just to make sure the refrigerator is not on as we go ahead and try to move it out of its location. Okay, the first thing I want to do in looking at moving the refrigerator out is measure to make sure what my clearances are uh, to make sure it's actually even possible first. Surely they got the refrigerator in here somehow and I've been told that you can get the refrigerator out uh, hopefully that's the case, but I want to do some measurements to make sure, decide whether or not I'm going to remove the door, decide how I'm going to access the four screws that uh, come out. Two of them are covered by the door. So I'm going to take those measurements first and see what my clearances are. All right, the first measurement I'm going to take is from the helm fiberglass over to the a microwave oven because that is my clearance side to side that will allow me to get the refrigerator out. For those of you that are wondering, it looks like just over 23 inches, so about 23 and an eighth. So 23 and an eighth inches there. Now what matters is the depth of the refrigerator. Now obviously I can't measure the depth of the refrigerator uh, all the way to the back but I'm going to open it up and take a measurement there just to make sure or just to see what that is so if I run my tape all the way to the deepest part of the refrigerator let's see where we end up here All right, to the deepest part of the refrigerator, looks like the depth is about 18 and a half inches. If I add the door to that measurement, then I'm gonna need about 21 inches. That's from the inside. So as long as there are not uh, two inches of depth on the back side of the refrigerator, I think we can get this thing out. To be safe, I think I'm going to take the door off anyway. We might as well uh, do that before the refrigerator itself has been uh, taken. Uh, the screws have been taken out and it's been dismounted because it'll be easier to get the door off now than it would be later. So let's figure out how we're going to get the door off. So looking at these, how the door is put on, if you open the door, You'll see that there are screws right here that you can remove. Three screws to take out, top and bottom, and on the other side as well. The problem is you can't get to those screws where the door is, so where the door is hinged. So I think the door has to come off of the hinges, and then I'm going to take these hinge points off just to make sure they don't scratch anything when I take the, the uh, refrigerator off. So all the stainless hardware on all four corners is gonna come off. So we're gonna use a crescent wrench, try to see if I can get these little flat nuts to come loose on the top. That appears to be working. So notice I've got the door latched. I think if I can take this top nut off, then I can just lift the door off of the bottom nut. So if you want to see what that nut looks like, 
It's a uh, little hinge pin with a nut at the top and a very flat surface. So you don't want to mar those up as you're try trying to get them off because there's not a lot of surface on the sides to grip with. Let's see if this door comes off now. Unlatch it. That was much easier than I thought it would be. So we've got the refrigerator door off. And with that, I can drink the celebratory Coke Zero that I kept inside the fridge. But now it's to take off the top and bottom hinge points, um, three Phillips screws on each of these. I'm gonna take those off solely to keep them, to make sure they can't be what scratches anything around this refrigerator. Lots of, lots of fiberglass on this side, obviously the floor, and we don't want anything marked up there. It would be very obvious uh, and very uh, difficult to repair. So let's take those four hinge points off and then we'll continue. So I've laid out the hinges uh, on the galley in the, in the appearance that they would have if I was looking at the refrigerator from the front. I did this so that I know which hinge goes in each corner. I don't have to figure that out later. I don't have to remember the orientation. I don't have to try and, and put one in and maybe put, put it back in the wrong place. So those are all arranged that way so that I can put them back in easily. And then uh, now we're gonna look at taking out the actual refrigerator itself. So I had the light on earlier just to make sure I knew when the power was out to the refrigerator. I have gone and turned the house battery switch off. Still plugged in around the battery charger, it's no big deal. The house switch has cut off power to the refrigerator, the light's out. I'm going to remove the tray and a little bit of uh, water coming out where it has defrosted. That's okay, it's a boat. Uh, I'll dry that up with a towel in just a few minutes. But there are four black caps that attach to the refrigerator. Those cover up for screws that actually hold the refrigerator to the fiberglass. So I'm gonna store those on the galley, in the galley. Okay, one of the things you'll notice, or that I noticed when I was looking at this, is the screws don't necessarily line up with the holes. So we may have a little hide and seek game with the screws. One of the things I noticed is the screws don't necessarily line up with the holes. We may be playing a little game of uh, hide and seek with the screws to get those out because they're probably longer than the width, the depth of the refrigerator. So we'll have to deal with that. But when you're doing projects, you have to deal with what comes up. So using the Ranger Tugs square bit, see if we can get one of these to come out. Okay, well, the fridge has been loosened. Now let's see what kind of weight we're dealing with. Okay, not too heavy. The back side seems to be where all the weight is. So I'm gonna gently slide this out. contact the floor anywhere that's unprotected.
Okay. So what looks like needs to happen is there is a condenser coil on the back of the refrigerator and the power cords are relatively short. So I'm gonna take this and move it forward, which means I need to be on the other side of the fridge. Okay, I'm on the other side of the fridge, coming at a different angle now, and uh, still got more water condensation coming out. I think the freezer itself was kind of thawing out. So we're going to slide this, my goal is to slide it forward and then toward the front of the boat so that I can get into that cave that will be created where the refrigerator was. should be able to slide it forward and see what's back here. Okay, so there was a longer power cord than I thought. It was nicely coiled up, and um, so it looks shorter than it was at the parts that I could see, but a nice coil there, so I could actually move the refrigerator even farther forward if necessary. We've got uh, water and um, other drain lines and uh, hoses underneath here, some T fittings for the sink probably going to the water heater I'm guessing at those and then got all the power and everything coming down the um, center column of the salon where the port around porthole is and also I believe everything that comes from the roof is up under there and making a right hand turn you can also see the uh, through hole fittings for what would that be the vent lines for the sink or no i'm sorry the vent lines for the head and the water tanks so very interesting Okay, the refrigerator's out. The access to the main part of this project, which is troubleshooting my trim tabs, is there. Now it's a matter of getting comfortable in that hole so I can get a light up in there, reach in and look around. That may be pretty hard to film, but I'm gonna give it, a best, give it my best shot. The um, uh, refrigerator removal itself went very smoothly. One screw that might have been a little stripped, I uh, was able to move up a size and get that screw out. And if I have time, I will replace all four of those screws just to make sure, uh, with the exact same screws, just to make sure uh, they don't have a stripping issue again. And the um, I've actually opened up the windows on the boat, so you might hear a little bit more noise. Uh, one of the 
side benefits of living next to a fire station is you get to hear the fire engines every once in a while. Imagine yourself riding down the road in one. Okay, so I want to take, before I work on the Linco trim tab switch, I want to take this switch out here. I think that'll give me more room to get access easier because I'm not sure what's behind this switch. So I'm going to disconnect the safety lanyard and then this cover just pulls off like so. So we'll set it aside. Got four screws here in the Ranger Tug square bit family. I think this is related to the four wires that I saw coming down when I took the refrigerator out. This will allow me to identify those wires and then figure out what my next steps are. I'll save those screws and I'll gently pull this up, maybe not so gently. See if I can figure out what goes where. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We've got, uh, looks like a piezo buzzer here. Um, different connections that lead to the ignition switch. So this would be our ignition connections and our safety lanyard goes into that same bundle. So, and yes, those are the, the cables that I saw on the underside of the refrigerator. I bet this orange one is the one that resets the trim tabs when you turn the ignition off. So that one may be in play for troubleshooting, but we will I'll set these aside, get them out of the way, and now I may have better access. You can't, there's not enough room to get up under there uh, through this hole, but what I want to do is see if I can get my hand up in there and loosen this and then see what, uh, what may be down there. So that's the next step. Okay, so I've got my pillow in place so that I can get down in there a little more comfortably. That's a pillow that I used or used when I had an inboard engine. And right there, is where we want to be. We want to get to the connection box or the Lumar box that's behind that. So I'm not sure I'll be able to video this part, but that's where I want to get to. I'm going to check the wires coming out of the box, or out of the, the uh, switches, and then see what kind of controller box they go to. Okay, those two gray connectors right there go to the trim tabs. I figured that out so far. I've also figured out that this white tube, the big white tube, is not actually a pipe or a, a water or air carrying device like the others that you see. It's actually there as a raceway to get cables to the back of the boat. So I would like to thank Ranger Tug for putting that in. That will put that will make fishing cables in in the future much easier. But those two connectors are the ones that go to the trim tabs. They appear to be well connected. Now I've just got to find 
the box to which they connect. Okay, and now, see if we can work this up here. You can see the threads for the backing nut. I unscrewed that. Now that nut should just fall down. Obviously I have to fish that back up later. But down here is where there were connections. All right, well there was not enough slack to pull that all the way out. So what I have to do, what I did is I pushed it back in. Uh, that'll give me the length I need to actually be able to test the cables inside. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect the power cable that feeds this uh, and then check for 12 volt power on the connector coming from the, uh, the battery. Now, I gotta put the fuse back in to do that and I have blocked my path with the refrigerator. So I'm gonna very carefully uh, maneuver my way across the seats, uh, but nobody needs to see that. And then once I get the fuse reinstalled, we'll come back and I will uh, start doing some 12 volt DC troubleshooting, make sure I've got power to that switch. And if I do, if I've got power to the switch, um, then it's a problem with the switch. I'll call Linco and get that replaced under warranty. I hear they have really good service. We'll, we'll see if they do or not. Uh, but if it's not the switch, then, or if there is no power, obviously we'll have to chase that down. Okay, I've got the house power on. I have removed the refrigerator fuse from the fuse panel. It's right next to the trim tabs. You can't miss it. The uh, trim tab fuse is back in. I'm going to see if we've got power to the trim tab switch. So I've got my multimeter set up here for DC. Oops. I've got my multimeter set up here for DC. Let's see if we've got power. Okay, as you can see, I've got 13.45 volts and plugged into the trim tab connector so i've got voltage to the connector i just don't have any actually actual actuation of the trim tabs so now i guess it's a call to linco to figure out why that is okay so update on the project you saw the refrigerator being removed we got to the wiring uh the had, we had power to the wires that lead to the switch. And so I called Linco this morning, talked with Jim, and he said, check the orange wire. Uh, it's just, you, know, you, gotta, you, you need to have the engine running and uh, check to make sure that you don't have power to the trim tabs. Then if you don't, more than happy to send you out a switch. So I came back out. Um, I, I thought maybe you don't have to have the engine running to test the orange wire. Check the orange wire, uh, turn the ignition on. Of course, I was getting alarmed because I've got the engine tilted up. And um, so all of a sudden the trim tab started working. So something in my moving around of the wires changed the connectivity and allow the trim tabs to work again. A little concerning, but I went through, I checked all the connections, tugged on them, made sure that none of them were loose. I actually uh, uh, zip tied them up uh, to make them easier to access if I have to get back in there again. Tightened everything back up, put the refrigerator back in, trim tabs are working, and I now know how to get the refrigerator in and out in a relatively easy and safe fashion. Again, people have you know, ended up scraping the floor up or damaging their fiberglass doing this. So I wanted to be very careful. And the putting it back in is the exact opposite of taking it out. It was very easy. It's back in. I'm going to put the um, uh, fuse back in, turn it back on, and uh, then we'll check the temperature a little later. So that's an update on the refrigerator in and out procedure. 
and uh, we'll check back in with you later. Thanks.